The movie opens with a police officer ringing the doorbell. Mitch, the homeowner, answers and lets him in. The officer, Eric, hands a plate of pie to Amanda, the hostess. A small group of friends is gathered in the house for Thanksgiving dinner. Jess, Thomas's young daughter, is dressed casually, which contrasts with the more formal attire of the other guests. Kathleen, Thomas's fiancé and Jess's future stepmother, criticizes her for not dressing up, which bothers Jess, who prefers a laid-back style and isn't particularly fond of Kathleen, reasons for which will be revealed later. As everyone settles at the dinner table, Thomas, who owns a local supermarket that he usually keeps closed on Black Friday, joins them. This year, at Kathleen's suggestion, they plan to open the store to offer items for free as part of a Black Friday promotion. Amanda brings the turkey and asks Mitch to carve it, but Mitch shares that he won't stay for dinner as he needs to get to the store to manage the promotion. Meanwhile, a large crowd gathers outside the store, eagerly waiting for it to open in 10 minutes, with people pushing forward to secure a spot at the front. The promotion has attracted numerous locals, and the manager is excited about the turnout. Back at the house, Jess confides in her boyfriend, Bobby, expressing frustration that Kathleen is stepping into her mother's role. Jess is also bothered by the fact that her father moved into a house he bought from Kathleen, who moved in shortly after. Now they're planning to get engaged, and Jess feels left out of the decision. Just then, Jess and Bobby's friends arrive outside, signaling that they're ready to go watch a movie together. On their way, they decide to stop by her father's store, as one friend wants to purchase a phone during the Black Friday sale. The group agrees to go in, taking advantage of the promotion that allows customers to grab any item for free if they leave within five minutes. The group rushes into the store, but as they enter, people waiting outside grow frustrated, unaware of who Jess and her friends are. Jess is momentarily interrupted by a fan stopping Bobby to chat, as Bobby was once a popular baseball player in high school. Meanwhile, Jess's ex-boyfriend, Ryan, notices her and invites her to a party. She declines, but he insists, which irritates Bobby, who steps in to pull her away from Ryan. At the same time, Amanda arrives at the store with Eric, bringing dinner for her husband, the store manager. They're both concerned upon seeing the rowdy crowd outside. Inside, Jess and her friends begin browsing, but their actions fuel the impatience of those waiting to enter. The manager instructs security to lock the doors, while an officer announces the store will open in 10 minutes. Despite these efforts, the manager loses control of the crowd, which begins to surge toward the store's main glass door, threatening to break in. Jess's friend Scuba notices the crowd pounding on the glass doors and orders the security guard to let them in. However, the other guard, realizing he can't handle the escalating situation, runs away. Suddenly, the glass shatters, and the crowd floods into the store, trampling over the security personnel. In the chaos, Amanda is thrown to the ground, and Evan begins recording the incident on his phone. People scramble to grab free items, pushing and shoving each other, while the security cameras capture everything. Bobby spots the injured guard still alive and tries to help, but his hand is crushed in the mayhem. Meanwhile, a woman hits Amanda with a shopping cart, fatally injuring her. At this moment, Eric fires his weapon to stop the violence. A year later, someone watches a video of the Black Friday incident on a laptop as a news reporter interviews the victim's families about the tragedy. Amanda's husband speaks about the lack of security personnel that day, and Bobby, who is now unable to play sports due to his injury, reflects on the consequences. Amanda's husband reveals that the store owner falsely claimed no CCTV footage existed of the incident. In another scene, two police officers stop by the restaurant owned by Lizzie, the woman who killed Amanda with a shopping cart. The sheriff mentions a John Carver mask that has become popular for the Thanksgiving parade. Meanwhile, Jess and her friends receive notifications daily, tagging them in the footage Evan supposedly posted last year. Jess accuses Evan of sharing the video, but he denies it, insisting he never uploaded it. Later, Jess and her father, Thomas, prepare to shoot a family commercial to promote his store. During the shoot, Thomas ignores the tragedy that happened the previous year, which angers Jess. Meanwhile, Bobby has cut off contact with Jess, allowing her ex-boyfriend, Ryan, to step in. Ryan's friend, Jacob, hands out flyers for a party he's hosting, but Jess and her friends decline due to the high entry fee. Just then, they receive a picture message with each of their names written on a dinner table, leaving them unsettled. Ryan arrives, announcing he has game passes for everyone, when Jess notices a man in a mask watching her. She turns, but he has disappeared. Later that night, as Lizzie is closing her restaurant, 
she finds the John Carver mask left on the counter. She throws it away but is suddenly attacked. The assailant slams her head into the cold storage door, injuring her face and fingers. She manages to lock herself in a room and tries to use her phone for help, but her injured fingers prevent her from unlocking it. She escapes outside, only to realize she's missing her car keys. Suddenly, her car starts up behind her, and she is killed. The attacker then hangs her lower body on the right Mars shopping complex sign. The next day, Evan arrives at college, where everyone receives a photo of Lizzie's body hanging from the sign. Jess speaks to her father about the incident, and he promises to increase security. Later, the police summon Jess and her friends to identify Lizzie's body, but none of them recognize her. As Jess leaves the police station, she runs into Bobby, who apologizes for ghosting her over the past year. Jess asks him to help retrieve CCTV footage from that night stored on her father's computer. Bobby, who is also preparing for rehab to get back into sports, agrees. Just as they're about to part, Ryan arrives, irritating Bobby, who leaves with Jess while Ryan heads into the station. Meanwhile, the security guard who fled the scene on Black Friday is aware he's in danger and plans to leave for Cuba that night. However, as he prepares to go, he realizes his passport is missing. As he searches, he finds a John Carver mask on the table. Suddenly, someone attacks him with an axe, decapitates him, and places his head with a name tag on the table, sending a photo of the scene to Jess and her friends. The police recognize the killer's meticulous nature, noting that he leaves no trace. Back at home, Jess accesses her father's computer and watches the CCTV footage, noticing Ryan meeting with one of the security guards at the mall that night. She records the clip on a pen drive just as her father arrives. He apologizes for being distant since getting engaged to Kathleen. Later, Jess and Bobby print images from the footage, and Eric points out that Ryan never disclosed his connection to the security guard who died. Eric warns them to be cautious around Ryan. Meanwhile, Evan gets embarrassed at school when Jacob reveals he copied an essay from their teacher's blog. As they sit together, Jess and her friends try to figure out who the killer might be, suspecting various people, including Robin, Bobby, and Mitch. When Ryan calls Jess, she ignores it. Later, a student named Lonnie is lured outside by a girl calling to him. As he sits down, watching her jump from a ramp, John Carver sneaks up from behind and kills him, then places knives below the ramp. The police warn Jess to stay home after the incident. She waits for Evan and his girlfriend, Gabby, to return from a game so she can go home with them. When they don't reply to her texts, Jess begins searching for them at school. In a corridor, Evan and Gabby are attacked. Jess eventually finds Gabby's phone in a cart, and as she picks it up, John Carver attacks her with an axe. She dodges the assault and hides among mannequins, blending in while the masked figure searches for her. Spotting an opportunity, she grabs a knife and a spray bottle, using the spray to momentarily blind the attacker before escaping. Unfortunately, she gains no helpful information to pass on to the police. Just then, Ryan and Bobby arrive at the scene. Bobby, furious, confronts Ryan about his relationship with the security guard, and things quickly escalate into a fistfight. Jess, fed up, tells them both she doesn't want to see either of them. Meanwhile, Julia's father arrives to take her to Florida, but Scuba insists on taking Jess to Jacob's party, believing they're safer there. McCarty gives Scuba a gun, though Jess refuses any weapons. On the way, Scuba talks with Julia about her trip to Florida. But soon, John Carver sneaks into Julia's room, kills the guard, and then attacks her father when he finds the guard's body. Julia, realizing the danger, calls Scuba, but Carver kills her brutally by driving pins into her ears. Jess and Scuba, desperate to help, rush to her house. However, when Scuba arrives, Carver uses Julia's body as a shield, preventing Scuba from firing. Carver then leaves her with an electric saw, and she dies tragically on the floor. After the incident, Kathleen blames Jess and her friends, and Thomas decides not to open the store this Thanksgiving. During the Thanksgiving parade, the police attempt to use Thomas's family as bait to lure the killer, heavily surrounding the area. The parade starts smoothly until Amanda's husband, Mitch, displays a banner to honor last year's victims. Suddenly, the attacker strikes again, targeting random paradgoers. As Jess, her family, and Scuba try to leave, the masked man detonates a bomb in the crowd and shoots tranquilizer darts at Thomas, Jess, and Scuba, leaving them unconscious. They wake up in the killer's hideout, where he gruesomely prepares Kathleen by covering her in syrup, salt, pepper, and coriander, cooking her as the Thanksgiving dinner. 
Jess and Julia manage to hide briefly, but Kathleen's attempt to escape ends tragically as Carver catches her, impales her with a shovel, and then burns her alive in an oven. The public is horrified, and police receive yet another picture of the masked killer. Jess, her father, and Scuba are then bound at a dining table as the killer starts a live broadcast. He brings out Kathleen's charred body as the centerpiece, then turns to Evan, brutally hammering his head, killing him as revenge for recording the viral video from the shopping incident. Amidst the chaos, Jess manages to free herself, confronts the killer, and ends his twisted plans. Suddenly, Scuba frees his hands and attacks the killer. Jess chases after the killer but he dodges her and escapes. Jess returns to the road and finds Eric's dead body. She takes his gun and heads back to the killer's hideout, shocked to discover that the real killer is Bobby. Eric tries to apprehend him, but Bobby slips away, prompting the police to launch a search operation. Meanwhile, Thomas, Scuba, and Gabby are recovering in the hospital. At the police station, Eric confronts Jess, who needs to sit down to catch her breath before heading home. As Eric steps outside, Jess notices that he's wearing the same shoes as the killer, and suddenly realizes that Eric is the true murderer. Seeing the recognition in her eyes, Eric locks the door and begins to reveal his twisted plan. He explains that he intends to frame Bobby as the killer and has been using Jess for information. He admits he loved Amanda and, after losing her on that tragic night, is out for revenge. In a sudden move, Jess reveals she's streaming live on social media, broadcasting Eric's confession. Enraged, Eric throws his axe at her, but she dodges it and escapes, running outside to hide. Meanwhile, Jack inflates the large duck balloon as Jess and Scuba try to flee in a car, only to be halted as Eric hooks it to prevent their escape. Just as the balloon fully inflates, Jess fires a shot at it, causing it to explode and engulf Eric in flames. Jess and Bobby manage to flee in a truck. Later, the police declare that the danger has been eradicated. Although Jess returns home with Ryan, she continues to be haunted by nightmares of the killer. And the movie ends.